Hi everyone, this is Tony from iForm Builder, and today I'd like to share a quick example of how to use subform aggregation now available in our 3.2 client release. We're going to start off on the subform that contains three elements, a pick list and two number elements. Our pick list contains several items that we can choose from to purchase. The first number element has some smart control applied to it, setting the element equal to zero each time a new record is created. The data column name of this element is Q, so we're saying Q is equal to zero. So every time we create a new record, it all, always comes in equal to zero. Our item subtotal has a little bit more complex dynamic value, but basically what it does is it's looking for the item that was selected from the pick list and then multiplying it by the data column Q. Depending on which number you enter in Q, it will multiply the number of items that you've chosen. To see how this works in conjunction with the parent form and how aggregation works, we need to step back to our parent form, which is our shopping cart. So if we load up the shopping cart, you can see that we're capturing today's date using a simple date function, and this element is uh, in read-only format. So this will come over, and you won't be able to edit this, this will just be uh, a label on the device view. This is our items uh, subform element. And this is how we get to um, the items, the item subform that we were just on. And this is where the real magic happens in total price. And this is where you will see what subform aggregation is all about. So if we go to the smart control for total price, you can see that we've included a uh, a function now that's available in iForm Builder. And this function is iformbuilder.math.sum. And in parentheses, we need to pass the array of subform records that we're looking for, and we want to sum. So to start off, we need to first put in the form name that we're currently working on, which is our parent form. So if I click on the edit button to see our parent name, you can see that our parent name is cart. So if I cancel out of here, you can see that we start off in the parentheses with cart dot selected underscore items with selected underscore items being our subform element that we're capturing all of our items in. So if we look at this, you can see that selected items is the name of this subform element. Now if we go back to total price, we have the name of the form that we're working on dot the subform element that we're going to be um, summing our uh, records from, and then in after that there's a, uh, there's a comma here, and in single quotes we have the data column name of the element that we're actually adding, which is item subtotal. So if we go back to our, if we go back to our items um, form, and we look at the data column name of item subtotal here, that's where we get this value from. So if we go back to our parent form, we see that in the smart control for total price, we have iformbuilder.math.sum and in parentheses the name of this form that I'm working on now, dot, the subform element data column name, comma, in parentheses, the data column name for the subform element that we want to sum, and then close the parentheses. Now we're also, I'm actually also including a page level JavaScript in this uh, example as well. So if we open the shopping cart form properties, you can see that I'm storing the, uh, the variables ahead of time and assigning them a value. So basically I'm giving the prices for each element here. I'm saying juice is equal to 1.5, soda is equal to 2. And that way in, in my dynamic value in the subform, I can reference these variables and then just multiply them by the number of items that have been chosen. I'd like to jump over to the actual device view here and show you what that looks like. So here's our shopping cart, and um, if we enter our shopping cart, you can see here's our read-only date that appears, and then our subform item, subform element that says select your items. So if we open this up, you can see that we are prompted to select our first item. So let's get some juice, and I'm feeling mighty generous, so I'll share with everyone in the group and purchase 50 juices. So you can see now that a calculation has been performed. So I purchased 50 juices at an item subtotal of $75. So what I can do now is hit done. And since we've set this uh, subform element to multiple paging, we can actually purchase uh, many different items. So I'll come back in here and 
you're going to have some juice, you might as well have some pizza. So we'll select pizza, and I'll buy 50 slices of pizza as well. And that comes out to 125. So we hit done here. Now if we go back at this point, you'll see that both of these items have actually been added together. So our total price is $200. And then we can have a, have a sign off on our order here. Hit accept. And our order is complete. And that's our quick uh, demonstration on how to use subform aggregation and also including page level JavaScript. Stay tuned for more examples.